Blessed Day Church, welcome to Undeserved Favor Ministries online Sunday service. It is such a joy to know that you are joining us today in worship, even when we are in the midst of this crisis. This is a testament that the Holy Spirit is always at work in us, that we can worship our loving Savior wherever we are, however it may be. I know that the past months had not been easy for some of us, that being able to worship God today is something to be grateful for. Being alive, healthy, breathing, and reigning over this coronavirus is something to be grateful for. Amen? And what better way to thank our loving Savior but through our praise and worship. Today, with a grateful heart, we sing Salamat Salamat to our God, for He is good and His love endures forever. And we know that, had it not been for Him, we will not be where we are today. So before we start with our praise, may I invite everyone for a prayer. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, with grateful hearts, we come today to praise and worship You. Let it be that our praises and worship be a sweet aroma to You. Father, we know that we can never repay you for the overpayment that Jesus did on the cross. Nonetheless, here we are today with hearts full of gratitude to praise and worship you because you are worthy. We thank you, Father, and we will never get tired to praise and worship you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Come on, church, let us sing our Salamat Salamat to our Abba Father for His greatness and glory.
Salamat, salamat Panginoon dahil binigyan mo kami ng pag-asa na kami ay magsasaya sa piling. Maraming maraming salamat Panginoon sa walang igil ng pag-agos ng iyong pagmamahal sa amin. At wala na kaming ibang nanaisin pa kundi pasalamatan ang iyong kadakilaan at ang iyong kabutihan sa amin. Father, We come into your presence today. Oh, how we love to be with your presence. Because in your presence, there is freedom. In your presence, there is peace. There is comfort. There is joy. How we long to be with your presence, Father. Ngunang sa matag-adlaw, na sa among paglakaw, gusto na mo na naaka. Gusto na mo sa tanan na mo mga desisyon na pagabuhat. Ikaw, magauban, magagiya ka na mo. Kay wala na gudlain pa na amahan na pagadaygon. Munang dilipod kami mo hunong o dayig sa imuhang pangalan. Church, let's continue to worship our Abba Father and our loving Savior. Like a son and daughter to his Father. Let's tell our Father how we want to be in His presence, how we long to be with Him every day, every moment, and every minute of our lives. Kay pagkaan ang indot kinoo, kung kauban ka, may katabawan, labaw sa tanan. Higpit ang kalipay, matagamtaman. Kay pagkaanin do't kinuo, kung kauban ka, may katagpawan, labaw sa tanan. Higpit ang kalipay, matagamtaman. Kay pagkaanin do't kinuo Kung kauban ka May katagbawan Labaw sa tanan Hingpit na kalipay Matagang
wonderful reminder that the grace of Christ is far greater. It's more than enough for all of us. Many some of us are feeling troubled and worried. Instead, let's leave our eyes to the grace that has already received us. He will surely lead us home. church we have now come to our holy communion so kindly make sure that you have your bread and cup with you as we remember the death of our lord jesus christ and so now let us remember that before jesus was betrayed he gathered his disciples in an upper room he took the bread broke it gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said this is my body which shall be broken for you do this as often in remembrance of me after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often in remembrance of me. And so church, that bread that you're holding right now symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ. And every stroke, every stripe, and every lash that was placed on his body has brought healing on us today. And the cup symbolizes his, his blood, and every drop of his blood washed away all our sins, past, present, and future, so that today we stand righteous, favored, and holy before God the Father. So together, let's raise the bread and declare in faith, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior, your body was broken, crushed and wounded for me. Today, I am healed and I am whole. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I am completely healed. I receive this Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Let me take the bread. now raise the cup and together we declare Lord Jesus you are my Savior your blood was shed for the forgiveness of all my sins today I am righteous I am favored and I am holy because of your blood I received this Jesus thank you Jesus for loving me and I love you too Amen let me drink the cup God bless you always, church.
we know that after the worship, you're even more excited to give your tithes and offering. But please be reminded that the giving of tithes and offering comes by our revelation that Jesus is truly alive in our lives. It is an act of faith and a privilege. So don't feel obliged if you do not have that revelation yet, but be excited because God will reveal it to you in His perfect time. If you already have that revelation and when you act out of faith, then surely nothing would stop the floodgates of heaven to open, as your Father in heaven has prepared everything for you. If you intend to electronically give your tithes and offering through online fund transfer, please indicate your name in the remarks field so that Pastor Ronel can personally pray for you. With this, we invite you to raise your hand or your mobile gadget or your tight envelope for prayer. Let's pray. O oh, loving and gracious Father, thank you for giving us both bread and seed. Bread that we may feed and seed that we may plant the little that we have in your mighty hands. We are confident that you will multiply and expand this just as you have multiplied the fish and the bread to feed the multitude to Jesus. But we are not just any multitude. We are your beloved children, and as your beloved children, we can confidently declare that you will continue to bless us to live a life more abundant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aren't we all excited to receive the revelation today? Yes, we all are. But before that, let's do our declaration together. In Christ, I am greatly blessed, I am highly favored, I am deeply loved, I am a winner, I am blessed to be a blessing. One more time, in Christ, I am greatly blessed, I am highly favored, I am deeply loved, I am a winner, I am blessed to be a blessing. And why is that, brothers and sisters? Because you and I are in Christ. What Jesus did on the cross gave us this wonderful favor, this amazing grace. Amen? That's why we can live assured of God's love in our life. So together, with more conviction and power, we say, In Christ, I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. Amen and amen. It is very important to be reminded of who we are in Christ. We are a new person because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen? So as we receive the word of revelation from God today through the Holy Spirit, let us start with a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and loving Father, thank you so much for this time of revelation. We pray for each and every one listening today that you reveal to us from the word through the Holy Spirit the truth that we can apply in our daily walk and that we may come out in victory in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. So beloved, enjoy today's revelation. Blessed Sunday, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that we're together online to receive the revelation from God on a very important topic. And yes, this is a crown. You might be wondering what this is all about. Well, thanks to the one who made this. Beautiful, no? Nice. Okay, let me try it first. Okay. Bagay ba? Bagay? Well, brothers and sisters, the truth is in the Bible, we, the Christians, God's beloved children, we are the royal priesthood. And what does royal mean? Royal, meaning kingly, princely, no? or queenly. No? Um, and what does it mean? It means that like in history, if you look at history, the king, the prince, the queen, the princess, they wear a crown. And that speaks something about who they are, right? And we should be wearing a crown, right? Well, of course it's biblically correct that we have a crown. God gives crown to his beloved children, but not yet. Don't wear this yet, no? While we are still here on earth, because we might look just weird and people will be wondering what's happening to us now but the bible talks about this crown and actually the bible talks about the crown as a symbol of god's reward for his children and that's what we will talk about today you know, the true rewards of heaven but let me remove this first because you know it distracts me 
but it's very nice. There was this uh, post on social media. It talks about the last words of Steve Jobs. And I will read to you a partial part of that post. And it's not confirmed accurate. But what's important is the message here no, of the so-called last words of Steve Jobs. Let me read here. Steve Jobs died a billionaire at 56 years old of pancreatic cancer. And here are his last words on the sick bed. I reached the pinnacle of success in the business world. In others' eyes, my life is an epitome of success. However, aside from work, I have little joy. In the end, wealth is only a fact of life that I am accustomed to. At this moment, lying on the sick bed and recalling my whole life, I realized that all the recognition and wealth that I took so much pride in have paled and become meaningless in the face of impending death. You can employ someone to drive the car for you, make money for you, but you cannot have someone to bear the sickness for you material things lost can be found but there is one thing that can never be found when lost life when a person goes into the operating room he will realize that there is one book that he has yet to finish reading the book of healthy life whichever stage in life we are at right now with time we will face the day when the curtain comes down. Treasure love for your family, love for your spouse, love for your friends. Treat yourself well. Cherish others. As we grow older and hence wiser, we slowly realize that wearing a $300 or a $30 watch, they both tell the same time. Whether we carry a $300 or a $30 wallet or a handbag, the amount of money inside is the same. Whether we drive a $150,000 car or a $30,000 car, the road and distance is the same and we get to the same destination. Whether we drink a bottle of $300 or $10 wine, the hangover is the same. Whether the house we live in is a 300 square feet or 3,000 square feet, loneliness is the same. You will realize your true inner happiness does not come from the material things of this world. So I'll, let me just end at that point it's the part of the last words posted on social media of Steve Jobs. And I'm sharing that realization from a billionaire you know, who accumulated so much wealth to show you that it's actually useless to make material things as the goal for your life. That's a deception you know, to make wealth as the priority goal of life. If you pursue wealth, you will realize that in the end, you have not gained anything. That you have not really lived a full life if you only pursue wealth. In fact, like this billionaire, we all know him. The more wealth you have, the more you will realize that you have nothing. In many instances, you know, people are kind to you because you're rich. People will show you respect because, well, you have the influence. People will make friends with you because you have the power and the authority. Once these all advantages are gone, they're gone also. And you will know the real hearts. No? Well, all that is pretense, 
vested interest. And that's why many successful and wealthy people are suffering this dilemma of you know, being surrounded by people who are only looking at them. You know, they, value, they value them according to what they are or what they have on the outside. Not based on who they really are inside as a person. That's why it's very hard for a wealthy person to know who really are sincere to them and who really care for them as a person you know, without the vested interest. But this realization, you know, as I've shared to you, confronts us, to, um, it gives us a very compelling question that we really need to address. Because does this mean that we should not appreciate wealth anymore? Does this mean that we should not you know, consider having wealth and that we should not think of reaping the fruits of our labor? Does that, does, does that mean like that? Well, the truth is, my friends, brothers and sisters, wealth is part of our life. Wealth is the result of effective use of creativity. Wealth is the rewards of efficient management of talents, gifts, and resources. No? Wealth is the byproduct, in fact, of discipline and diligence. Wealth is one of the natural consequences, it's a good consequence, of hard work. In other words, wealth is good. It's a blessing from God. All right? But wealth is only, let me emphasize this, byproduct. It's just the result, the consequence, the reward of something good. Wealth should not be a goal. Don't make wealth as the goal. Wealth is not the purpose of life. Sadly, some people, they believe that if they have so much wealth, they will be happy. They will have meaning in life. They will have fulfillment. Well, they will be disappointed like Steve Jobs. Wealth can only be useful as a means or a tool to an end. Wealth should never be an end goal. That's why we teach people, don't work for money. Don't love money and use people. Instead, use money and love people. Right? So, Let's go to the truth, the reality of life. The truth is that there are rewards in life. And part of that reward, of course, the wealth. In fact, our life is intertwined with rewards. Now, let me focus in on rewards. Our life involves rewards. The Bible even talks about rewards. People always look for rewards, tama? Um... Even um, it, it's, a, it's a come on, no? when there's a reward points, you buy in this store and uh, you get rewards, people are into rewards. But here's the good news, no? even God is into rewards. There's so many verses in the Bible and I will show you in a very, uh, in a short while, that you know, rewards are part of God's design. Let, let me show you. you know? um, in Psalm 58, verse 11. Then people will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Did you see that? Righteous are still rewarded. Psalm 62, verse 12. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. See that? Matthew 5, 11, so that was all, this Old Testament here, New Testament, Matthew 5, 11, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil, evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Revelation 22, 12, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Hebrews 6.10 For God is not unfair. How 
can he forget your hard work for him? See, that's reward. Or forget the way you, you used to show your love for him and still do by helping his children. Look, 18, 29, and 30. Yes, Jesus replied, And everyone who has done as you have, leaving home, wife, brothers, parents, or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, will be repaid by many times over now, as well as receiving eternal life in the world to come. See that? So, I've just shown you a couple of verses talking about God's rewards. And so, it's there. It's part of God's design. There will be rewards. However, while we will you know, experience the, 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 the results, you know, the rewards of hard work and discipline and effective management you know, and leadership, uh, use of our talents and creativity here on earth. No? In fact, here in Luke 18 verse 30, we will be repaid many times over now. Where is now here on earth? No? And then of course, eternal life in heaven. Part of that, but what we're going to really discuss or talk about is this heavenly rewards. When does this happen? Because there's such a thing as heavenly rewards. Well, it's after when the church is raptured. There's such a thing as rapture. And the Christians are brought up to heaven no, with Jesus Christ, the dead first and then the living um, in an incorruptible body. And there, you know, after that rapture, the believers, you know, the Christians, will face judgment. And this judgment for their works and there are special rewards that will be handed out but take note this is not a judgment for salvation no? because salvation we are already saved no? when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you are already saved so this judgment is recognition of, to, of what we have done to glorify God and to advance his kingdom in Romans 14 12 it talks here of Giving an account, no? Let's, let's read Romans 14, 12. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So, look at that. Each one will give an account of the things that we have done. Now, there are two judgments actually mentioned in the Bible. The, there's the first judgment for the Christians and the second judgment, the final judgment for those unbelievers. For unbelievers, you will find in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Let's read it. And I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them, for this heaven and earth was passing away. Now, in this Revelation 20, verse 11, the great white throne, actually it refers to the judgment for those who did not believe in Jesus Christ. Okay? So this is not the judgment that I'm talking about here where we receive rewards. What I'm referring to is the first judgment that happens um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Let's read it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So... This judgment seat of Christ, or we, in, in, in the Greek, it's bema, no bema seat, is for the believers. And this is the moment where we are given the rewards based on the good works that we have done. So that's the first judgment for the Christians. Let me emphasize this, huh? just making this clear. This judgment for the Christians is not whether... No, uh, they will enter heaven or not, because they are already in heaven. Not during this time, no, of judgment. It's not a judgment of um, where if you have done good enough, no good works, you enter heaven, and um, if not, then you won't enter it. No, because everybody's already here, the Christians in heaven. So instead, it's a judgment that determines the appropriate rewards of recognition. For the good works that the Christians or you have done, we have done, you know, or performed. 
So this is a judgment, um, not as final exam, no, in heaven, no, but um, which where Christians are not going to be judged based on sins anymore. Of course, let's make that clear because Jesus Christ already took care of our sin. No, he paid for all our sins, past, present, future. So this is a judgment of rewards. Let me just quickly um, recall to you forgiveness of sins. So you will find here that it's not about the sin, no, because sin has been resolved. Our sin has been have been resolved. And in Galatians 1, verse 4, Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us. So Jesus has already forgiven us. No, He's he in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. I pass on to you what was most important and what had always been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. In 1 John chapter 12, uh, chapter 2, verse 12, I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. Romans 8, verse 1, there, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So, I'm just pointing out that this first judgment for the Christians is not going to be about sins. It's going to be about rewards. And in Ephesians chapter 2, you will find here that there is such a thing as rewarding or rewards day, okay? We call it or rewards night because that has really been God's design. Look at here in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. God saved you by grace when you believe and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Verse 9, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. Now take note here in verse 10. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So, See, so we can do the good things. And that's God's plan. So, again, let, let's, let's clarify this. There is such a thing as rewards. But it's not about salvation. Salvation is not a reward. We are not saved for the good things we have done in verse 9. But that we are saved by grace. It's a gift. And we are rewarded for the good things we are done. And emphasis here, we have been saved for good works. God saved us and made us new creations to do good works. That's why in Matthew 5, 16, it says here, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So, God wants you to do good words, good good works, because you are saved. And He wants others to see that no, for His glory. Matthew 25, verse 21, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. See? So, good works, excellent work, hard work will reap rewards in heaven. In fact, at this point, let me show you, there are five crowns or rewards. Now, crowns are symbols of rewards. There are five crowns mentioned, specifically mentioned in the Bible. And as Christians, we're excited to receive either one of these five. Now, there are actually more, but these five are, are clearly stated. First is the victor's crown. There is such a thing as a victor's crown in heaven. This is for those who have trained diligently, you know, have been uh, in transformation. You know? They have gone through the real transformation and they learned to discipline themselves, not being slaves to their bodies or their flesh. You know? They're able to say no to you know, temptations, not necessarily bad things, but saying no to some things so that they can say yes to more important things. And these are uh, Christians who have, you know, they have faced challenges no? and overcome challenges. 
they look at challenges as part of the training not as a miserable uh, experience so that's the crown or the victor's crown it's found in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 25 let's read and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown therefore i run thus not with uncertainty thus i fight not as one who beats the air but i discipline my body and bring it into subjection lest when i have preached to others i myself should become disqualified so this is the victor's crown the second crown is the crown of rejoicing it's in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 let's read let's read for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? So, what's this crown? This crown of rejoicing is given to those who have ministered and, and brought the gospel you know, and brought people to Christ. Now, so, if you have um, like invited people you know, and, and, and they, you have brought them to Christ, they received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you will receive this crown of rejoicing. Another crown is the crown of righteousness. It's in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So this crown of righteousness is for those who have been excited about the appearing of Jesus Christ, you know, the uh, Jesus Christ coming back. You know? So there is that ra uh, crown of righteousness. So probably you will hear these people talking about the end times or how exciting it is to see Jesus finally in heaven or to be with Jesus Christ. You know? So they, these people or these Christians receive the crown of righteousness. The fourth crown is the crown of life. You know? And this is in recognition of um, enduring struggles and persecutions no? for the cause of Christ because you know these people really love the Lord Jesus Christ so the crown of life is found in James chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him so these are Christians who really love the Lord and endured temptations and even persecutions in revelation chapter 2 verse 10 it talks about also this crown of um, life do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. So, this crown of life is given to those who have endured uh, persecution, even persecution with loved ones. No? When you become um, a, a new Christian and you've been fired up about the gospel and about the love of the Lord for your life, the grace of God, and you tell people and you're being persecuted, that's part of it. And you can receive this crown of life. The fifth crown is a crown of glory. And this crown of glory is actually the preacher's crown or the shepherd's crown. No. Um, actually, it's, it's reserved for those people no, who are shepherds of God's people. No. Even a small group leader could receive this crown of glory. The Christian leaders, even church workers, can receive this crown of glory. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5. Let's read verses 2 to 4. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So, you will find here 
the crown of glory are for the church leaders no so even if you 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 you're just like a, a small group leader you have a small bible study or um as simple as when you are you know taking care of some people that you know making follow up with them if they're going to church or they're listening to uh preachings you know or they're reading the bible or even doing some you know small bible study you receive this crown of glory brothers and sisters i've shared to you the crowns no as part of the rewards heavenly rewards because what i'm trying to show you and i believe god wants us to see is that instead of pursuing wealth we pursue god no we live our christian life and do good and mighty things for god no not for the rewards or for the crowns but because we love jesus and we want to glorify him you know glorify his name we want him to be known to the people of the world we want others also to receive jesus christ as lord and savior for their salvation we're not doing that for rewards and the crowns but of course what can you do when you do these things when you glorify god when you advance the kingdom of god you know, tell people about the good news of salvation of jesus christ you receive the crown you're giving the reward all these rewards will be given to you and again the rewards are indicators that god is really pleased and is truly happy no when you do good and mighty things for him and so go for it no because you love jesus christ don't make rewards as the goal don't make wealth as the goal they will just be the results amen so that with that in mind brothers and sisters let me um close with this um story you know of a missionary couple they worked in africa for so many years and after some years of of mission they they decided to go home they they are americans now so they decided to go home this was a long time ago and they were they took the boat you now from africa to the us and they realized that they had taken the same boat that the president of the united states also was riding on because the president of the united states was in africa during that time um he went around the, the president went around you know and i think he he was uh um participating on a hunt no you know ngarang maghunting and the president of the us now is also going home no to the us but what this couple noticed this missionary couple noticed was that the president you no know, was being you know welcome you know, when they arrived at the port in the us they were the president was being warmly welcomed by so many people everybody welcomed the president and no one even noticed them the missionary couple and so the husband started to question said, this is unfair no i mean he said we've done a very good work in a mission and how come no one is welcoming us back home this president well he's president but why are we not being recognized and so the the husband was you know was feeling bad that they're not receiving even recognition so they found a place they rented a small house uh in a particular state and of course the husband uh, reflecting on what happened no observing the president being warmly welcome and they were not even recognized no one welcomed them in spite of their missionary work in africa the husband became very discouraged he started in fact to complain lord why is it like that why are why are you not lord you no know, rewarding us recognizing us and so he shared this to his wife and his wife um advised him why don't you spend quiet time go to the room have quiet time no? and that's very good no for a wife to advise the husband no to 
have quiet time and encourage the wives to do that when your husband no, is not feeling well no, or uh, confused about God. And so the husband went into the room and had quiet time. And after like an hour or two, the husband came out of the room, this time smiling. And so the wife was wondering, oh, what's happening to you? No? Why are you smiling this time? And the husband said, well, God settled it with me. Um, he, the husband said, when I questioned God, Lord, why is it like, like nobody welcomed us home no? when we did a very good job in Africa? Why is it like that? And God, he said, God told me something very important. He said, God said, son, are you asking me to give you the reward? But you're not home yet. You're not home yet. This is not your home. Being here on earth is not your home. You're still on the journey. You continue doing the good works. Because when you're home, your rewards will be great. Brothers and sisters, friends, we may you know, feel the same way, especially now that we are Christians, we have Christ in our life. You know, we may feel that sometimes, or probably God is not recognizing the good works that we have done. Or probably today you are struggling in life. Or wondering, you know, with all the things you have done, why is God not rewarding you? for the good works that you have done. Understand this, my friend. You're not home yet. You're still on the journey. So keep moving on. Just continue doing the good work, especially during this pandemic. Use this as an opportunity to do good works because you know you have your rewards in heaven. Now, of course, we're not working for the rewards. We're working or doing good works because we love Jesus Christ. But of course, we cannot deny the fact that it's also exciting that there's going to be an anticipation and expectation of God's rewards, the crowns that we will receive in heaven. So continue with that, brothers and sisters. And the good thing, those crowns waiting for us, they are the true rewards of life, not the material things here on earth. Again, let me remind you, use the material things here on earth for God's glory. Your true rewards are awaiting in heaven. Did you receive that, brothers and sisters? I believe so, and I trust that you're receiving this revelation. And my hope is that you will really remember and bear in mind on a daily basis that you're not home yet. That here in life today, here on earth, with all the pandemic, this is just part of the journey. And our goal is to be able to glorify God. Use your talents. Use whatever you have no? for God's glory. Advance God's kingdom. Tell the good news to people that you know. No? And that's what's more important here on earth. You have money. You have wealth. Use that because you love people. Brothers and sisters, let's continue in this journey because we are not home yet. Amen? Praise God. As we close, let me uh, declare this wonderful blessing for all of you, my brothers and sisters, my friends, so that you will be able to really and you will enjoy you know, the days to come. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, friends, that you are blessed from your head down to your toes with health, with, re with uh, healing and with restoration and wholeness. I declare that in Jesus' name, you are blessed with abundance in provision in all that you need, you will be provided for, and even in the things you want. I declare in Jesus' name that you shall be pro protected every step of the way, wherever you are, whatever you do. You will also have success, and you will have victory in all the challenges that you will face. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you will have wisdom, overflowing wisdom, that in any problem, you will find a solution that will bless you and bless others and glorify God. I declare in Jesus' name that you shall glorify the name of our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
and you will spend the coming days in victory, in God's favor, in everything you do and wherever you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, God bless you always and enjoy the rest of the week. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that revelation today. Grace Generation, let us again remind ourselves who we are in Christ together. I am in Christ. I am righteous because of Christ's sacrifice. I am greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved because Jesus loves me. Amen. As we draw to an end, we would like to invite you to pray this important prayer of faith with us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. You suffered and died for me. Your wounds are for my healing. Your blood washed away all my sins. You died, but now alive in victory. Now I can live your life of victory. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we believe that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are now restored to your original purpose as God has designed for you. Now, before we close with a prayer, we greatly encourage you to share our sermon excerpts on Facebook. These are bite-sized reminders of God's love and grace. Also, do subscribe to our YouTube channel for you to be updated of our service uploads. And don't forget to like our Facebook page and send in your prayer requests and testimonies. Share grace, share Jesus. So as we now go all on our separate ways today and this week, as one body in Christ, let us close with a prayer. Let us pray. Abba Father, thank you so much for this wonderful privilege to worship you and to receive your revelation. May we walk in this truth as we go on our way in the confidence that in Christ we have everything that we need. And thank you for glorifying yourself in our lives through your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church, and see you again next Sunday. God bless.